Good morning, brothers and sisters. And thank you, Ty. He's a hard act to follow with his perfect spirit and his sweet words. Today, I am going to speak on a topic that is very dear to my heart. It's how our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, love us, support us, and comfort us, even when it feels like they're not there. Sometimes we want what we want when we want it. And we may not be given what we want, but we always will be given what we need. And if we look for miracles in our life, we will be able to find them. So fun fact, when I was around 10 years old, I was in primary and our teacher was teaching us about when Peter walked on water. So Peter and the disciples were in a boat and there was a bit of a storm and they were scared. And so Jesus walked out on the water to go comfort them. And when the disciples saw him, they were scared again. They're like, is that a spirit? And Jesus called to them and said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And then Peter did something I would do. He said, Lord, if it be thou, call me out onto the water. So he wanted to walk on the water too. And Jesus said, come. So Peter in his great faith stepped out of the boat and actually started to walk on the water. But then the waves and the wind scared him and he started to sink. And he said, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and pulled him up and calmed the storms. Now, in my young mind, I was very confused because I thought if he had such great faith and he started to walk on the water, wouldn't being able to walk on the water help increase his faith? Why on earth did he sink? So I thought, I have greater faith than Peter, and I was going to prove it. So the next day, I went to my neighbor's pool, and I stood on the edge, and I said a little prayer. Heavenly Father, I believe in thee. I have great faith, and I know that I can walk on this water. So I took my first step, 100% sure that I was going to cross the entire length of the pool. But no, I plopped in. And I got back out and I prayed again, Heavenly Father, I promise, I really do believe that I can walk on this water. And I tried again and again and again, and I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. I really wish I had a video of that. I'm sure that heaven was getting a great laugh that day, watching me fall in. But I also think that heaven was actually proud of me for my young faith and for the fact that I still felt the Savior's love and had a strong testimony. Although I didn't get the miracle I asked for, I was still given what I needed. I could still feel the Savior's love, and my testimony was strong. Later in life, there would be many times that I would cry out, Lord, save me, and he would come. For example, when I was 16 years old, I was driving home from San Francisco, and I rolled a car going 65 miles an hour. And as all the glass was crashing down around me and the roof was caving in and hitting my head, I physically felt heaven surround me and I knew I was going to be okay. I came out of that accident with just a bump on the top of my head and a scratch on my neck from the seat belt. You've also heard me tell this story about when my brother was hit by a car, and I was told in a voice that said, he is going to die, but he is going to be okay. I've had a handful of experiences like this that I would love to share with you, but instead I'm going to share an experience where I pretty much felt like heaven hated me and I was abandoned. <clears throat> so around um, January 2022, I was living the dream. I felt like heaven was smiling down on me and saying, you're doing a great job. You're a great mom and wife and daughter and friend. I'm so proud of you. I was literally one of the happiest people that I knew. But then my whole world changed. Without going into all the gory details, um, I will just say I'm pretty sure menopause is trying to kill me. So for about a year, I just over a year, I have not been sleeping well. And I went 
months and months with only getting three hours sleep a night. And I would cry out, Lord, please save me. It was torture. But he did not give me the answer to my prayers that I asked for. Instead, he, I received anxiety. My body was so stressed out from not sleeping that I developed this pain in my chest that I feel all the time to some degree each day. Sometimes it's mild, sometimes it's severe. But it makes me think of sad things, and it's hard to be happy, and it makes it hard to feel the spirit. And once again, I cried out, Lord, please save me. And instead, I got tinnitus in my ears. So every day, all day and all night, I have a ringing in my ears. And I said, Lord, please save me. And instead, I got vertigo. So this whole week, when I wake up at 3 in the morning, I lay in bed, tired, thinking of sad things, listening to my ears screaming at me. And every time I roll over, the world spins. Now, you might think, what's going on? I have great faith. I thought I could walk on water. Why are things not working out for me? But I have to tell you, I know that the Lord is still there for me for three reasons. First, I remember the experiences that I had in my young life. I know that he's still there and he still loves me. Second, I think it's pretty much a miracle that I'm able to pry my head off my pillow every morning. Somehow, I'm still able to be productive. I can go to the gym and go on walks and go to lunch with friends and serve and do all the things that I normally do. 100%, this is heaven helping me have the strength to get through this trial. The last thing is I know that heaven sends me earthly, earthly angels. So sometimes in my saddest, darkest moments, I will get a text or a phone call from family and friends. Sometimes it's a friend that I haven't talked to in years and years, and they'll tell me, you've just been on my mind, and I felt like I had to call. 100%, that's heaven inspiring them to reach out to me. It's like heaven is telling me, I'm still here. You're not forgotten. I've got you, and I love you. So in the words of Elder Holland, he says, God watches over us. We can always trust in him. He very often answers our prayers through other people. On days when we feel we have been pushed to our limits, we are reminded that we won't be pushed beyond our faith. The old adage is, man's extremity is God's opportunity. We won't discover just how much strength we do have until it is tested, refined, and tested again. So going through this hard time reminded me of another funny story having to do with the pool. I'm the oldest of seven children, and when I was around 13 years old, we were at another neighbor's pool, and I was watching my younger brother, John, trying to dog paddle in the shallow end, and he was really good at it, so I tried to encourage him to, hey, John, go out into the deep end, but he was too scared. He wanted to stay where he was safe, where he could put his foot down. And no matter how I coerced him, I couldn't get him to try. A little bit later, we were standing at the edge of the pool, and I just picked him up and hucked him in as far as I could go. And he was terrified. His blue eyes were popping out of his head, and he cried out to me, Please, help me. I'll give you all my money. I'll give you $8. When he finally got to the edge, I pulled him out. And he was so angry with me. He thought I was being so mean. And I tried to explain to him, John, I promise you, I was not trying to be mean to you. I was trying to help you because I have faith in you. I knew that you could swim in that deep end. And if you couldn't, I was right there to pull you out and save you. After a little more coercing, he agreed that I was right. And he swam across the pool. I feel like at this time in my life, the Lord has thrown me in the deep end. But I know he's not being mean. I know he's standing nearby and that he just wants me to grow, grow stronger so that I can help other people grow stronger. President Holland said, there can and will be plenty of difficulties in this life. Nonetheless, the soul that comes unto Christ 
who knows his voice and strives to do as he did, finds a strength beyond his own. President Uchtdorf said, wherever you are, whatever the circumstances may be, you are not forgotten. No matter how dark your days may seem, no matter how insignificant you may feel, no matter how overshadowed you may think you may be, your Heavenly Father has not forgotten you. In fact, He loves you with an infinite love. If you will only allow His divine love into your life, it can dress any wound, heal any hurt, and soften any sorrow. This is my testimony that sometimes life is really hard. Sometimes we don't get what we want, but heaven will always give us what we need. I'm going to end with this quote that I love. Rely on the Lord, for only he can turn a mess into a message, a test into a testimony, a trial into a triumph, and what is broken into something beautiful. I leave these things with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.